fifth aspect of this birth is something that I believe everybody needs to be aware of in whatever way makes sense to them. And that is the phenomenon of the return of what I call the sacred feminine, of the feminine as sacred. You can see this new cherishing of the values of compassion and interconnectedness and harmony in all kinds of different ways. You can see it in the really extraordinary attention that's being paid to holistic medicine, for example, in the passion for new visions of cooperation in business and for a new vision of ecological suitability in business and sustainability. You can see it in the growth of yoga and, and the growth of a sense that the body, which has been maligned and abandoned for so long, contains the secret of our existence, which is pretty obvious, but has been negated in so many ways. You can see this in the return of a new divine celebration of sexuality in Tantra. And you can see it in a whole host of amazing new theologies that excavate and bring to light the buried feminine in all of the different revelations. What this means is that the force of divine compassion and interconnected understanding and love in action that is the sacred feminine and is the way through for humanity is now entering in, even in the middle of this ghastly chaos and nightmare, entering in wherever it can to bring its healing wisdom and knowledge and power of truth. And this will be the force that will help us save humanity. And of course, sacred activism is this force in its purest, fiercest, clearest form, acting to save the planet. The sixth aspect of the birth is also crucial for people to understand. I think all of us facing the horrific images of violence and cruelty and barbaric tribal stupidity that invade our screens every single day, sometimes despair of humanity, and sometimes feel that human beings can only reach for increasingly violent solutions to their problems. But this is an illusion. Because one of the things that happened in the 20th century is that a wholly new vision of pacific, non-violent action was born and was shown to be really useful and really powerful in extremely difficult and dangerous situations. Gandhi, for instance, unseated the might and majesty and power of the British Empire, not by weapons, but by moral force and a series of campaigns based on what he calls Satyagraha, soul force. And his non-violent strategy not only unseated the British, but gave the world a wholly new vision of how serious, deep, visions could be implemented in reality. It was his example that partly inspired Martin Luther King, who was also, of course, inspired by the real Jesus, the true Christ consciousness, not to call for a bloodbath in America, but to bring in an extraordinary vision of harmony and peace. And his authority, which he paid for with his life, helped birth the civil rights movement and helped make really quite extraordinary advances in civil rights. You see this non-violent strategy carried on also by the Dalai Lama in his priceless and holy witness to extreme compassion in all circumstances, even or perhaps especially with his so-called enemies, the Chinese, not enemies to him. You see this in Mandela's extraordinary example and Tutu's extraordinary example in South Africa and in the creation of the Councils of Reconciliation after apartheid ended. 
What I'm saying is that as the situation darkens and deepens and as we become more and more threatened by the images of barbaric violence everywhere, we must not forget that in nonviolent action pursued with tremendous inner strength, we have been given a way through that has been shown in historical circumstances to work. It will cost everything to put this nonviolent action into practice because nonviolent action really requires enormous inner strength, enormous courage, continual shadow work, deep commitment to spiritual compassion, even for those who are opposed to you on every level. But it can work, and we've been shown that it can work. And this is a very thrilling witness for the human race and for the birth that's possible now. The seventh aspect of the birth is something that I know many people on the earth are now waking up to. And I know this because I teach everywhere in the world and Many, many people tell me that they know this, that they're having visions about this, that they're having dreams about this. And very simply, I could put it like this. The divine wants the birth of a new kind of humanity, a humanity that enshrines and incarnates its own inner divine nature in justice and compassion and harmonious living with all the different realms of nature. And in fact, the divine knows at a very primordial level that this is the secret destiny of humanity, to birth this new quantum leap of its own evolution. And the divine is showering us with every kind of grace, every kind of blessing, holy teachers, holy teachings, tremendous inspiration at the very moment when we need all of these things the most. So we have as our ally in this tremendous ordeal of birth, we have as our secret midwife the divine itself. And those of us who have really come to know this and experience this again and again and again and again and again and again in very painful and difficult circumstances slowly come to a sober and profound hope that if you and I give our lives for this birth give our resources, our minds, our hearts, our energies to this birth our activity, our actions will not be meaningless. They will receive the secret and profound and all-transforming blessing of the divine. And extraordinary subtle miracles will be done through them and around them because the divine wants us to get through and wants us to get through this tremendous transformation and wants us to birth ourselves in our true divine dimension. So when you bring together these seven aspects of the birth, the divine secret desire to see a divine humanity born on this earth, the growth of a vision of nonviolence that can help us get through extreme situations with extraordinary grace, mercy, compassion, and reconciling intelligence with a very, very deep and subtle return of the divine feminine and its force of passionate compassion in action with a growing mystical renaissance that is bringing to the whole of humanity.